Microphones are used every day to convert acoustic waves, sound, into an electrical signal so that it can be recorded, amplified, and broadcast. In pro audio applications, there are three basic types of microphones, dynamic, condenser, and ribbon, or velocity. Each has its own unique qualities that make it suitable for different environments and the type of sound to be picked up. An ideal mic would be rugged, so it could stand up to harsh environments and treatment. It would also respond to every nuance of the desired sound. But to do this, the pickup, the part of the mic that actually converts the sound into an electric signal, would have to have very little mass, making it easy for the faintest sound to be picked up. All microphones, or transducers as they are also called, work in basically the same way. Sound pressure waves strike or move the mic's diaphragm or membrane, causing it to move in unison with the sound waves. This motion within the microphone is converted into an electrical signal that varies with the sound. This conversion from mechanical to electrical and how it is accomplished takes on many different forms and is the subject of this tutorial. Dynamic microphones are widely used in professional audio, especially for live events due to their ruggedness and simple design. One of the most recognized dynamic microphones is the Shure SM58, but it's only one of many dynamic microphones available. A dynamic microphone works by sound waves striking the flexible diaphragm, which is attached to a coil of very thin wire that is wrapped around a magnet. As the diaphragm moves, the coil also moves. As it moves past the magnet, a voltage is induced into the coil when it cuts through the magnetic lines of force surrounding the magnet. This voltage is connected to a transformer to raise the impedance to 600 ohms. The drawbacks of a dynamic microphone is the mass of the diaphragm and the coil, all of which the delicate sound waves must move in order to produce an electrical voltage. Dynamic microphones work in the same manner as speakers only in reverse. If you connect a speaker to a microphone input, it will pick up the sound. And if you apply audio to a dynamic microphone, it will produce sound. But this is not a good idea, as you will probably blow the coil of the microphone. Overall, dynamic microphones are rugged and dependable. They don't require power and can take a lot of abuse and keep on working. Condenser microphones are very popular and are used in everything from cell phones to recording studios. Due to their design, they are more sensitive and deliver a different type of sound texture from dynamic microphones. Condenser is another word for capacitor, and that is what a condenser microphone is, a variable capacitor. In a condenser microphone, two plates a stationary backplate and a movable membrane make up the capacitor. Between these two is an electrical charge, just like a capacitor. The charge is produced by either a battery contained within the microphone or from a phantom power supply feeding the mic. As the sound waves press against the movable membrane, they press the two plates closer together and the capacitance changes correspondingly, and this changes the voltage output from the capacitor. Because this condenser produces a very small voltage 
an amplifier is required within the microphone to bring it up to a higher level. The same battery or phantom power supply can also power this amplifier. Another type of condenser microphone is the electric condenser. This just means that the two plates, the membrane and the back plate, are charged permanently and do not require any power. But once again, the output will be very small and does require an amplifier at its output. So power is still required for the microphone, if not for the plates. Ribbon microphones have a reputation for being very delicate, but today's ribbons are made of sterner stuff. The old RCA DX77 is a world famous ribbon microphone that had been seen for years on the desk of Johnny Carson at the Tonight Show. Ribbon microphones, also known as velocity microphones, have a very warm sound suited for vocals and acoustic instruments. As the name implies, the use of a ribbon of metal that is corrugated. The corrugation allows the ribbon to be flexible and to bend easily. The ribbon is suspended between two magnetic poles. As it's moved by sound waves, its motion cuts through the magnetic fields which induce a voltage into the ribbon. In this way, a ribbon mic is similar to a dynamic microphone. But the ribbon of metal is very thin and flexible, making it more sensitive to softer sounds. A transformer is used to bring the impedance up to 600 ohms. Piezoelectric microphones work off the principle that certain crystals, piezoelectric elements, will give off a small amount of electricity when they are stressed. So when a piezoelectric material is pressed on or squeezed, it gives off a small amount of electricity. Piezoelectric microphones tend to be not as sensitive as other types and work best when they are attached to a sounding board, such as a pianos or a guitars. Just as with other types of microphones, a piezoelectric microphone has a diaphragm which is moved by sound waves or vibrations. This is then transferred directly to a, the piezoelectric material and as it's stressed it creates a voltage and turned into a sound source. 